I've got several small vases to make for a local gallery. So let's get them ready. So they've been through the kiln once and they're fairly hard, fairly tough, but not as tough as they will be after they've been through the second firing. I've got to take them from this stage and I have to wax the bottoms, then write on them and finally glaze them and put them in the kiln tonight. The first thing I need to do is check each one for slight blemishes. Yeah, so there's a tiny bit of something on there. Just do a little sanding there. If this was major, mega work, I'd be wearing a mask, but these are very tiny little blemishes. So now they're ready for the next stage, which is waxing the bottoms. So let's pour some wax into the bowl. And now a little bit of magic, just to add the couple of drops of that. So the first thing to do is to center the pot on the banding wheel. The blue food coloring just burns away in the kiln. It does, doesn't leave a permanent mark at all. And now I just have to gently coat the bottom of the pot with the wax. There we go. It'll take a few minutes to dry. So what's the point of all this? If any glaze gets stuck to the bottom of the pot, then when it melts in the kiln and then cools down again after when the kiln cools down, it will turn into glass and stick the pot very, very firmly to the kiln shelf. And getting it off is a, is a hell of a job. So uh, of course, it, and it ruins the pot as well. So I don't need, I need to make sure there are, there's no glaze at the bottom of the pot because the clay, the bare clay touching the kiln shelf is okay. That can come away, especially if we coat the bottom of the shelf with a substance like, um, like aluminum hydrate, which doesn't melt at all. I'll let the wax dry for a few minutes and then I'll glaze the inside and the bottoms of each of the vases. So here's my tub of glaze and it's all settled at the bottom so I just have to make sure it's properly mixed up. Now I need to check if it's got enough water in it. Dip my hands in and just have a look at how the, my, my hair's come through, my hair's on my fingers. Everyone's got their own technique for doing this. That's mine. Yes, it looks fine, looks um, liquid enough. So now the foot rings are glazed. I need to glaze the inside of these vases. So again, an even coating inside. So where we've got a bit of overspill here, and also on all the rims, I'm going to wash all of that away with a sponge and water. Okay, they're all glazed inside, the foot rings glazed, and now they're all ready to be written on. I'm going to write an abstract text across this vase. I'm using an underglaze pen, which is a bottle full of underglaze and a very thin nozzle on the top. And for this, I can't really speak when I'm doing it. So I'm going to take a mixture of underglaze colours, measure out the 
definite amount. It's two. And add water. I happen to know I need two and a half times as much. I'm going to use this brush for a couple of the vases. I've got to really carefully think about how, how dilute this uh, colour is and how much goes in, in the brush, how much to put back by just touching the edge there. It all makes a big difference. It's not like painting because there's going to be glaze going on top of this and that will affect the colour very, very much. So what this is telling me is how uh, quickly the, the um, colour is racing to the bottom of the bristles because it's very heavy. It's made of metal. It's made of metal basically, the, uh, the colours. And as soon as I do this, it sinks down towards the tip. So even the angle you choose to apply the colour makes a big difference to how much goes on. So let's write a stroke. So the colour will modulate a lot in the firing. There's a nice dense part at the beginning, then it tails off in terms of uh, density, then it tails off in terms of volume. So you start to see the the, um, the vase through the, the stroke. So where the colour has just gone onto the wax resist, I'm just going to clean that off very carefully. Luckily it comes away quite easily. So this is how they all came out. I'm quite pleased actually with the, uh, the variety and uh, quite consistent finishes. It's only at this point I really get to see what the brush stroke looked like because at the moment of its making took a few seconds and then it was immediately covered in glaze and fired and then now it's the first time I get to see the whole thing. I love the way porcelain just, the light just flows through it. This is the one I was worried about with a crack. It's got a very slight crack. It's not even really a crack, it's just a, I don't know what you call it, tiny separation. But that's, it's fine. And I like the bars. The stroke does some really nice things. So the bottoms of all these, when they first come out of the kiln, are a little bit rough from sitting on the, uh, the kiln shelf and also just where the glaze meets the unglazed bit of the, of the pot. Sometimes it's not, it's a little bit rough, so it just needs sanding. I'm just using a diamond pad. It doesn't need much, just enough to take the little burrs off so it feels smooth and hard. It's just worth checking the rim, that feels quite smooth as well. If it's too sharp, the rim, then the glaze separates from the very acute edge, but that feels fine. Well, here are all the vases wrapped up, ready to go by courier to the gallery tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, by all means, leave a comment below. Till next time.